Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about a genuine, little-known gem of a composer, Ludwig Irgens Jensen from Norway. His dates were 1894 to 1969. He had a pretty long life, but he wrote very, very little music. He was sort of like the Norwegian equivalent of Manuel de Falla, one of those guys who seemed to be around for a long time, but who wrote very, very few works. But every single one of them is a gem, a little polished diamond. Now, most of his orchestral work fits just on, on two discs. There's a single symphony, which we'll talk about in a minute, an amazing work called Passacaglia, which is one of the great orchestral exordiums of the 20th century, um, a four-movement suite taken from incidental music called the Partita Sinfonica, which is gorgeous, uh, a theme and variations, an orchestral theme and variations that's magnificent. I mean, this is all really, really terrific stuff. He wrote one oratorio called Heimferd, Homecoming, which is kind of like the Norwegian national oratorio. I mean, you know, everybody needs a national oratorio, right? I mean, you've got to have your national oratorio, and this is theirs. Um, quite beautiful and exquisite, absolutely exquisite uh, song cycle with orchestra called Japanese Spring. Take, you know, text to Japanese poetry. It's sort of like the Norwegian version of Das Lied von der Erde, only a lot shorter. But wow, is it beautiful. I mean, this is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. And there are two recordings that I need to talk to you about. There are some others. There have been others. Um, there are a couple of the C-Max label. They may be very hard to find. But these are a little bit easier. One of them is quite easy, happily, and it's probably the best of the batch. It is this one on Naxos. You get the symphony in D minor, this short little piece called Air, and then the Passacaglia, which is epic, really epic. I'm serious. Um, now, the symphony has a very, very interesting history. Irgens Jensen wrote it in 1942, in the middle of World War II. And most of his music is, is very sort of optimistic in tone. Very, it's very rational music. It's very clean and clear and, and, and well-grounded and stable. You could tell his, his personality was not in any way, um, you know, sort of decadent or, or in another way sort of twisted or bent. You know, there was nothing wrong with the man and there's nothing wrong with his music. For that reason, he actually cut and deleted the final movement of the symphony. Originally, it had three movements. The last movement was published separately um, after his death and called Rondo Marziale. And the reason for that is because the ending of the symphony is quite pessimistic. I mean, it was the middle of the war. He was violently opposed to the German occupation of Norway. And I think that he probably felt after the war that the universe needed a more optimistic ending. So he uh, left it in two movements because the second movement is very, very interesting. It's not your typical slow movement. It starts out that way and then picks up pace and ends with a triumphant chorale. So, so it's not what you might expect in a slow movement. And it does, in fact, make a perfectly acceptable ending. However, this Naxos recording has the original form of the symphony, and it really ought to be heard that way because, of course, nowadays we are not allergic to symphonies that end quietly, at least not on disc. And if it ends pessimistically, because those were the circumstances in which it was composed, and that's how the composer felt, then we are more than well willing to accept him at his word. And so I really do recommend hearing the symphony in its original excuse me, its original three-movement form. Now, this performance of the Passacaglia is a stunner. It's about 20 minutes long. It's one of those, I mean, it's it's a monolith. It really is. You know, it starts in Passacaglia-like way with a theme in the bass, and it contains several tunes and variations along the way. There's a central triple fugue, which is magnificent, then a huge chorale buildup to the end, and then a beautiful, hauntingly ethereal soft 
Coda. And I'm going to play you a bit of it. I want you to hear the, the big build up at the end and then the coda that follows a little bit of it because it's just, again, the music is, it's noble and triumphant without a trace of bombast or pomposity. The counterpoint is lean and healthy. And Jürgens Jensen was basically a self-taught composer. So really, uh, it, you know, his achievement was all the more significant for the fact that he'd done it himself, folks. He didn't bother to take anyone else's advice. But this Naxos recording is really a, a knockout and it's essential and it's available. You can also get two discs on CPO that contain most of his orchestral music, including the Partita Sinfonica, which I think is just to die for. And if you're a Classics Today Insider member, um, this set I, I reviewed as an Insider um, special review with sound clips of the Partita Sinfonica. So you can go hear it over there if you would like. But um, this contains sort of the balance of his other orchestral works and the revised version of the symphony with the last movement, the Rondo Marziale, separately. Now, the Trondheim Symphony, who plays on this thing under under um, Elvind Odland, or Ivand, pardon me, Ivand Odland, excuse me, Ivand, um, is, is quite good. I mean, it's a very, very good orchestra, but they're not as good as the Bournemouth. And I, I think that, you know, as a way to begin your Irgens Jensen voyage, you should get the Naxos recording. And even if you have to duplicate stuff, because there's so little that if you want to get, for example, Japanese Spring on CMAX, you're going to wind up with another recording of either the Partita or the Pasacalia or the Theme and Variations. You're going to get all this stuff, but it's worth hearing. It's, it's that level of quality. And so I'm not at all, you know, worried about the fact <laughs> that you're going to duplicate repertoire if you like this guy. But he was a absolutely a major voice and the fact that his music is relatively scarce only makes it all the more valuable to us right folks so please give Jürgens Jensen a try and just keep on listening boy is he a good composer I mean, he's a really solid rock solid quality musician and he deserves your attention at least one disc's worth if not more thank you and take care